Okay, so I just have a few slides and then um, wanted to mostly focus on uh, people's questions. Uh, really would like to hear after, you know, all this time with AGL, what are your suggestions for what we could improve on AGL? Because that's really what we want to focus on is the developer experience and how we can make your life easier. Um, so just a quick overview. Most of you should already know this. Where AGL is, you know, collaborating to develop the uh, car of the future through rapid innovation. We are hosted at the Linux Foundation. Uh, myself, uh, I'm Walt Miner. I'm the community manager. Jan Simon, you can see him as well. He's the uh, release manager, and we both are employees of the Linux Foundation. Um, totally open source software. Everything we do is completely in the open. Um, all these slides, by the way, should already be posted. I posted them on uh, SCED uh, just before the, uh, the session started here. So we have 11 OEM supporting AGL at the moment, including most of the major Japanese manufacturers, um, including um, you know, Toyota, Mazda, Honda, Subaru, Suzuki, Mitsubishi. We have European uh, manufacturers like Mercedes-Benz and Volkswagen. And um, we have uh, you know, Ford here in the US. And we're always, and we, have, we even have a Chinese manufacturer, SAIC. So uh, a pretty good variety of different manufacturers who are participating in AGL. Um, we have a total of 155 member companies. Um, this might even be a little out of date since I got this slide. Um, but again, we're, we're, we're signing up members at quite a good rate this year, even despite the uh, COVID epidemic. And we're focusing on all of the vehicle in the car. Um, as we like to say, if there's Linux in the vehicle, it should be it should be running AGL. So infotainment was our um, our original um, our original uh, prog original profile that we worked on. Now we've been focusing on instrument cluster, but we're adding things like tel we've added telematics, uh, head up display with the sand cloud board. And uh, we're working with Elisa on functional safety. And eventually, we'll add uh, ADAS and hopefully autonomous driving to our, our portfolio of software. So we have the AGL unified code base, which is what everybody should be using. Uh, basically, a single open source software platform for the entire industry. Um, we, we aim to provide at least 70% of the base platform for production projects. And really our goal over the last you know, five or six years that I've been involved is um, cultivating an ecosystem of developers and suppliers and automotive expertise using open source and using this single platform. And our goal has been to make, uh, create, a reference hard, create reference hardware and software and applications that are available for the entire community. So just a quick overview of our schedule. This year we released, um, at the beginning of the year, we released our 9.0 release, Itchy Ice Fish. Uh, in September last month, we released 10.0 Jumping Jellyfish. We are now working on uh, Kuki Koi, and I've got a few more, more detailed slides about those schedules in a second here. So the UCB for Jumping Jellyfish, which was 10.0, which was released in September. Um, why keeps doing this? We, um, we up rev to uh, the Yocto 3.1, which is the long-term support version of Yocto. Um, we basically, we updated the window manager, compositor and uh, home screen. Um, and we all, that was all done to match the, uh, the demo feature set that we had at CES last year or, or the earlier this year, rather. We had uh, other new features that were driven by uh, gap analysis and member donations. Um, 
we extended some of the existing AGL binders. We um, created some new test plans and our, our CI group continues to add uh, to the, the test infrastructure. Um, so for Jellyfish, um, we basically, we worked throughout the year. We did the final release in September, but should be filled in. Um, it's already out and available. And we're working on a, uh, the first patch release we're working on for, for next month, for November. For Kuki Koi, so the plan is we'll uh, continue with Yocto 3.1, the long-term support version. Uh, right now, we plan to continue with that for you know at least the two-year life cycle, but you know we'll continue to revisit that. Um, but that's the plan for now. Um, we'll be adding features like uh, instrument cluster containers, which is something our instrument cluster expert group has been working on. And I'll talk about the expert groups in a second. But the instrument cluster expert group is working on uh, creating a um, uh, creating a production ready or close to production ready version of an instrument cluster that is also um, functional, you know, ASLB functional safety ready uh, by the end of uh, next year. Um, our our virtualization expert group is working on Vert IO. And then uh, Denso is uh, contributing something called rules-based arbitration for the user interface that we also hope to get in for uh, Cookie Koi. So the schedule for Koi um, right now, or this this schedule was originally created around the idea that we would be attending uh, CES in January. Obviously, that's not happening. Um, CES has been is now virtual only. Um, so, but we're gonna basically we'll stick with this schedule with the final release in the uh, February timeframe, February twelfth. And then patch updates next year. So, just wanted to touch on the expert groups. So. In terms of developers, um, the, probably that you know, there's there's several ways to get involved. Um, I've got some slides coming up on um, developer resources, such as how you know meetings, and um, you know documentation website, uh, things like that. Where to get the code? Um, but really, you know, if there's a particular area of interest that you have, the best way to get involved is to participate in one of these expert groups, and. Um, I like to say you don't need to be an expert to participate in our expert groups. Um, um, you just need to be willing to, uh, you know, work on these areas, have some knowledge is, is great. But even if you're just looking to learn something new, uh, participating in the expert groups is a, is a great thing. This is the list of uh, currently active expert groups. And if you go um, later on, I'll have uh, some links to our groups.io page and to our wiki page, and you can find out when the when the meetings are for each of these groups. They meet every other week. Um, they each have an active page on the wiki page and, so, and in some cases on Confluence for documenting requirements and meeting minutes and what they're working on. Um, the virtualization expert group is what's focusing on the Vert IO use case. Um, Continuous integration, automated tests. They're they're doing all the work with our uh, test infrastructure, with Jenkins and Lava, um, you know, and everything that's associated with that. Jan Simon's also looking at how do we integrate um, uh, FOSS tools, and uh, like he gave a presentation on yesterday, as well as possibly some um, static analysis tools into the CI loop. Um, Instrument cluster is very, very, oops, sorry, shouldn't have done that. I want to go back. Instrument cluster is very, very active, looking at creating that uh, instrument cluster reference. Um, and to complement that, we've got an IVI expert group that's forming uh, to focus on adding some more production ready features to the IVI profile. And uh, that's something that we uh, just 
uh, we're just we're just in the process of forming. Uh, we're thinking Toyota will be leading that expert group. Uh, Suzuki currently leads the uh, instrument cluster expert group. Um, so I think you know, just in general, as a developer, it's probably the best way to get involved in a particular area that you might be interested in. The other, so here's, I, this is again, I, I uploaded all these slides already to SCED. So you can see our wiki page, our documentation site. Um, there's a getting started guide, both on the documentation site and on the wiki page. I think uh, the documentation site I should link to now instead of the wiki. We've got uh, pre-built binaries and source tarballs. Our release notes are on the wiki page. Um, Garrett and Git are available. We use Garrett for our code for code review, and we've got a Git mirror as well. We have every Tuesday, ex except for today, we didn't have one because of uh, ELCE here. We have a developer call, so anybody can call in. Uh, if you have a question about how to do something, uh, you can either ask it on the mailing list, you can ask it on IRC, we're on IRC, um, or you can call into the dev call and we'll try to get you the help that you need. And then we typically, in, in addition to that, we, again, we try to have uh, regular face-to-face -face meetings among the developers. Um, typically, in a, in a more typical year, we would try to do something every about every two months, six weeks to two months. Um, you can see this was what we did uh, last year. Um, this year, it's been a little more limited. Uh, we had some events that were just uh, canceled. Uh, we had some face-to-faces that were canceled. But we have had a few virtual ones. Um, and we have another virtual face-to-face -face meeting scheduled for December 7th through 9th. So it's another opportunity to participate um, on a larger scale with the developers. I think for the October one, we had about 35 to 40 people participating. And that's really it. I wanted to really spend most of the time here um, uh, answering your any questions people have or discussing anything that people might want to bring up. Um, so uh, I don't know, Jan Simon, were there any questions that appeared in the in the chat? No, not so far. So if not, you can uh, unmute your mic and um, ask a question or put it in the chat here. or I can sing some really bad songs. Hello. Hello, Rakesh. Uh, hi, I have a question. Uh, so it's a general one. Uh, so when you mean that uh, you are going to bring in ADAS capability, or let's say you already brought a certain part of that into automotive data Linux, um, how is it, uh, let's say, uh, how is the AI part coming into picture here? Like, what are the developments that are happening specifically to artificial intelligence? Really, at this point, we've more focused on the sensor side of ADAS and making and trying to provide a, a sensor framework and uh, um, vehicle signaling architecture so that you can combine sensor inputs. We've not really focused on the AI part and how to bring that in. A lot of that our, our OEMs are saying are, is proprietary and they're not really willing to contribute that at this point. So like, like any open source project, we're, we're reliant, you know, so we're reliant to a great extent on what people are willing to contribute and bring into the, into the project. So um, at this point, we've not seen a lot of interest from uh, the car manufacturers to, to bring that into AGL, but it's definitely something we're hoping for. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, well, you're welcome. Thank you for the question.
I'll just jump on there. Other, people have done demos with the, uh, I think I'm trying to remember the name of it. There's a couple different open source stacks, although I think both of them you end up needing to potentially play some games around training data. But uh, uh, the Baidu system, I think I've seen demos of uh, running on top of AGL. I forget the name of that one off the top of my head. Um, NT, an NTT data MSC was showing some things at, uh, in some demos running on top of AGL. Yeah, I mean, if something runs on Linux, you can pretty much easily get it to work on top of AGL, so. Yeah, a lot of what we see people, a lot of applications, you know, and that's more on the application side. A lot of applications we see people bringing to various uh, trade shows or CES. And it's always, it, it's always surprising to me to see what people are running uh, <clears throat> Uh, on top of AGL. It's always interesting and surprising to see that. Anybody else have any uh, questions, how they can participate? I'd like to uh, open it up to also hear what, what could we, um, if you've been using AGL, what could we do to improve your life or your experience as a developer? Anybody? Um. Oops. Now, Simon, do you have anything you want to bring up while, while we're here? Um, well, I, I could ask what, what hardware people might be interested in. Um, so we have the uh, Ford on IMX8 uh, going on. Um, so there's uh, support for that being contributed and worked on by, by community members. Um, so we would like to hear uh, if, if any of you have interest in that or what other uh, boards or platforms might be interesting to you. Mm -hmm. So we have, just in general, we have IMX8, we have Raspberry Pi, we have uh, Renaissance support, um, Intel, both QMU and uh, UpSquare and Middleboard. Yeah, basically if you need to demo um, or wanna check out AGL, any, touch screen laptop or anything x86 will will do for a quick try uh, raspberry pi 4 will work fine with hdmi um, so that's easy to to try that Well, this is going to be a short session if nobody has any more questions. It's maybe a pretty generic question since I'm pretty new to the whole project, but do you completely focus maybe only on the device side or is there also something like um, interfacing the vehicle for instance from the cloud and especially having a common abstraction layer for that on how to access data from the vehicles or is it out of scope for your project? 
So uh, we do have, okay, there's, there's two parts to that question. So yeah. we do have um, a vehicle signal manager and a CAN interface. Um, so, and there's been a lot of work ar around, around that. So there's, so you can access the vehicle, you can access the vehicle data through CAN. Um, and uh, some guys at Reutlingen University have been integrating that more and more into their car simulator and trying to build out some more of the generic infrastructure around that. Um, and then we have a vehicle to cloud and that's being done through our connectivity expert group. If I go to the, if I wanna go back to the expert group slides. Um, and then uh, we have a vehicle to cloud expert group that's been focusing on the, how to get that data up into the cloud for, for analysis. And that's been led by um, um, uh, Forge Rock. Um, and they've done, so some companies that have done some work with uh, plugins for, um, for AWS and for Azure Cloud to get the data up there. So they're, they've been working on the generic uh, interface there on that side. So there are plenty of pieces already available in AGL for that. Um, and of course, that's that's an area that we continually like to uh, to build up on. There's a question from uh, Jan Löber in the chat window. Um, so he says, "I see in the release notes that you are now using Etna with an IMX6. Uh, How is your experience with that? And are you also using it on IMX8?" It's probably a question for Scott. Yeah. Uh, well. The for six, it just kind of happened. Uh, I mean, I had done work in the previous, uh, I guess the last couple of releases where I was explicitly configuring to build with that NV for the IMX6 boards that are community supported, just because it, I mean, at this point, it the consensus is it works at least as well or better than Vivanti on those. On, on the eight, initially when I did some work, um, there's some, were some community people trying to get uh, one of the NXP BSP layers working, um, they weren't having huge success. Uh, so I kind of rigged up something where, with Vivante for the first go around because that was more straightforward. Uh, but then once we upgraded to Dunfeld, that Navi became more doable. Uh, the, there were new enough bits in uh, in the various layers. So the uh, at least initially, we were. I was seeing some issues, and I think one of the the community members that was playing with it were seeing some issues with with that Nivi. But uh, the uh, Walter Lozano, Lozano from uh, Calabra did some work. There were a couple things missing in the five four stable kernel that uh, were needed to get at Nivi kind of working well on the at least on the the particular. Uh, the board that we're sort of focusing on at the moment for the community support, which is the uh, the uh, IMX8 MQ uh, EBK board. Uh, so at least for me, I haven't done a huge amount of testing on it. I just kind of do light support for it. Um, it's I think now uh, at least with on on the five four kernel with current Meza and uh, Whalen and Weston, the performance is in the ballpark of Avante. Uh, there's a couple. Th times where now and again, I think maybe it's slightly slower, but um, it seems reasonable. And I think it's it, it would be usable in production if you were not in need of some of the other um, like video to code. Uh, and uh, I think there's some stuff in uh, Vivante for integrating with uh, a couple of the, there's um, some hardware like video uh, processing unit stuff in the, the IMX. Uh, kernel that NXP sort of support that I don't think there's anything upstream for yet. So if you didn't need the fancier things like that that are only in NXP's BSP um, you know, and, and enabled with Vivante, then I think you could probably get by with that Nivive. Um, I don't think there's anybody from Collabor on the call. I think I got the impression they were doing a, a bit more research on that um, when, when Walter was looking at it. Uh, couple months ago um but no it's 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 reasonable um i i mean at this point i think it's pretty clear that i i'm x6 it's very obviously uh you know a, a good choice to use it uh i'm x8 i think there's still enough 
stuff. I mean, I, we did have to patch a couple of minor things to get it working on the EVK. Um, but I think if you're running newer, you know, if you're on like upstream five, you know, eight or nine kernel, I think it's probably going to be pretty straightforward. So, um, but yeah, no, I think it's, it's reasonable. Um, it would be nice to have maybe some people who have other IMX8 hardware jump in and do other testing. Um, the, the IMX8 MQ EVK is, is about the only board that we have ready access to, but I know there's a, a bunch of people out there with uh, SOM based uh, boards. So, so quite a few different uh, SOMs out from Phytech and, and several other companies that it would be interesting to see some contributions on getting uh, images built for them. So hopefully that answered your question. <laughs> I think I now have my microphone working. So uh, thanks for the um, extensive answer. Is there a particular IMX8 board you're looking at, Jan? Um, I was ju just uh, interested in how your experience with Ednavif is, if that matches what uh, our experience is, or if there's anything uh, we've missed that causes you problems. Yeah, I think the, the only real issue I've seen, I mean, it was back last fall, it was less obvious uh, of how to get it to work well on, uh, on an, like an, especially the AMQ. I mean, it's, there's the NXP didn't do themselves any favors because there's like six different flavors of, of IMX8 and there's, I think, three different GPUs in there. So yeah, yeah. Um, you could say, like, I mean, the, working on like the the mini, the, the, the MM was lots of people could point at that working, but the 8MQ was a lot more do it yourself for quite well, a while. And you should have been working earlier because that was the first thing Lucas had on his desk. So, yeah, I mean, the, the thing with, uh, that was mostly, I mean, uh, our hands are a little bit tied because we, you know, we want to keep testing with, the, you know, a consistent set of layers in AGL. So we were stuck on THUD up until, you know, early this year, which made it harder to pick and choose bits. Yeah. I mean, I had trees on, you know, here locally where I had hacked up, you know, backporting several things. And I, I think I did get it working quite a bit earlier before I pushed something to, uh, like AGL upstream just because it was going to be a big, you know, a bunch of changes the project wouldn't want to carry for any length of time. So, I mean, it, it was doable before, but I, I, once we went to Dunfell, it was pretty straightforward. So, um, so yeah, yeah so, I think so today it's in a way better shape now. It's, it's a lot more obvious how to, to put it together. If you have any other questions or um, maybe on the uh, M plus or on the, video input output stuff. Uh, there's the Edna uh, channel on Freenode. Yeah, uh, I'm subscribed. <laughs> I okay. don't post there. I, I keep track of what's going yeah, on in there. Ju just ask yeah. there uh, and either. So you'll yeah, get answers. I think answers. I asked a question way back like in the spring. But, uh, and I, 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 I exchange notes with uh, Merrick uh, somewhat okay. frequently on, on Edna stuff. So Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, thank you, Jan. Okay, anybody uh, anybody else have something they would like to ask? Feel free to unmute your microphone or type a question into the into the chat window. Someone's got to have a question. Can I ask the audience a question? Sure. Since I see people from companies that I have a suspicion that they might have an answer is if you're already using a Yocto project or open embedded based Linux system in a, a vehicle environment, 
could you, you know, maybe either in the chat or unmute and, and give us a, a, a little description of um, the reason why you wouldn't currently be using AGL for that as opposed to your own in-house custom distribution? If you if you want to say, <laughs> if not, I'll, I'll uh, I can live with that. And what could we do to make AGL uh, closer to something you'd be um, interested in adopting? That was worth a shot. <laughs> okay, anything else? Well, if there's nothing else, I guess we'll end this early um, or we'll just hang out and you can all stare at me either way. All right, well, I guess we'll um, we'll wrap this up early then. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Walt. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.